Welcome to the video introducing the 2020 Temple Rubric for Greenwich Public Schools. The committee has planned a phased rollout of the changes. Today, we'll focus on the instrument. In August, the focus will be changes to the Temple processes. The TEPL committee had several goals in tackling the work to update the TEPL instrument. They worked to streamline the document, remove redundancy, simplify the language, align the entire document to the strategic plan encompassing personalized learning, and align with state expectations, all while holding true to the research on elements that impact student learning. Today, the TEPL committee wants to introduce you to the evaluation rubrics that will be used beginning in the fall of 2020. Make note of your questions. At the end of the video, you will receive instructions for how to present those questions. Before we look at the revised instrument, we want to let you know that the committee is currently working to streamline the various processes in TEPL. Those changes will be ready in the fall of 2020. The committee's primary goal is to put the processes in place to facilitate professional growth and reflection while eliminating the parts of the process that are not adding value. Let's start with the design and then we'll move into the content. The rubrics are organized into domains that align with the state and TEPL II. The committee gave great thought to how the instrument could support the cognitive processes associated with the planning and delivery of effective lesson. They also thought about how the document could help create a fertile ground for professional conversations. Obviously, the classroom environment is a constant work in progress. Teachers give consideration to that every day, whether they're thinking in the context of a specific lesson or in rapport and relationships with their students. Those concepts are covered in Domain 1, the learning environment. As we move to Domain 2, planning and assessment, we will begin with the clarity of the learning target, moving next to considering the task that the students would engage in to meet the target. Domain 2 ends by considering how the student level of mastery will be assessed. Domain 3, Instruction, moves us into considering the critical thinking and problem solving students will do with the intended learning, how they will use analysis and arguments as part of the process, and where and how communication and collaboration support the learning. Finally, Domain 3 puts an eye on how information fluency and digital literacy support the intended learning. Domain 4, Professional Responsibilities and Reflection, is typically not observed during the classroom instruction. It focuses primarily on professional responsibilities associated with being a teacher and reflection. You may notice some differences in the layout. The committee added arrows extending beyond all four performance levels and colors with gradation while removing the lines between the performance level descriptors. The intent is to emphasize that the descriptors are portraying a continuum instead of four distinct points. You will also notice the gray wraparound concepts. Those are designed to frame the language of the indicator, giving additional context to consider. While the descriptors are presented in boxes, they are not designed to indicate checkboxes. The lines between the descriptors were only left in the document to make the language less confusing to the eye. These design features help to focus on a preponderance of evidence and how the evidence aligns to the descriptors to find a place on the continuum. The concept of preponderance of evidence is new and will represent a major shift in both culture and practice in Greenwich Public Schools. Preponderance of evidence allows the evaluator to consider all the evidence for the year in totality and not just in incremental moments. 
therefore becoming ongoing discussion points rather than all aspects being present in all lessons. In other words, evaluators will consider what are the typical patterns with the concepts described in the document over the course of the year. Next, we'll move to the content. The Tuple Committee kept the concepts from the original rubrics that have been repeatedly shown to have a positive impact on student learning. Some of those are environment, standards and objectives, questioning, feedback, and lesson tasks. But they clarified the language and aligned it to the district's strategic plan. Domain 1, Learning Environment, emphasizes relationship and rapport along with clarity of expectations. The evidence aligned to the three descriptors are considered together to come to one rating. The concept of preponderance of evidence is important to highlight here. If the evidence from the observations show a consistency within the environment, an evaluator may not provide evidence for the environment as a part of every observation, unless there's a change. The preponderance of evidence would show the consistency of practice over time without having to increase the redundancy of providing basically the same evidence for each observation. We will now pause for two minutes for you to scan Domain 1. While you scan the indicator, make note of any questions or anything that is unclear. Also, notice the ways that you're already working toward this domain in your classroom. As we move to Domain 2, Planning and Assessment, consider again the lesson planning process. Lesson planning begins by bringing clear focus to the standards and the learning target. From there, most teachers move to the task that they will have students engage in to assist in, in accomplishing the objective or the learning target. That naturally leads to considering how you will assess progress toward that target, both formative assessment and eventual mastery or summative assessment. This domain is written from the viewpoint that effective planning leads to the effective implementation of instruction. Therefore, you will notice that there is an expectation that these planned concepts are implemented effectively. That viewpoint strongly connects domains two and three together. We will now pause for two minutes for you to scan domain two. As before, please make note of any questions or anything that is unclear, and also notice the ways that you're already working toward this domain in your classroom.
in Domain 3, Instruction, you may notice that this is where the new indicators, as we've called them for the past several years, are housed. Domain 3 is about how instruction is implemented. There's a flow to the domain that builds on the flow described earlier. That process starts with the teacher considering how to engage students in critical thinking and creative problem solving as part of the learning target. Part of the classroom expectation is analysis of everything that is happening within the lesson and creating arguments and reactions with reasoning to what is happening, giving us analyzing and constructing arguments with evidence. That leads the teacher to consider where the concepts of communication and collaboration best support the learning target. The domain ends with information fluency and digital literacy, again showing how those concepts support the learning. Let's take a look at 3A, Critical Thinking and Creative Problem Solving. It is unique in the rubric as it is the only indicator that extends to two pages. This was an intentional choice on the part of the Temple Committee. Page one focuses on the teacher's pedagogical moves that promote critical thinking and creative problem solving. Those moves are questioning and feedback. Those teacher pedagogical moves are near the top in research for their impact on student learning. Page two makes a shift to focus on student behaviors with critical thinking and creative problem solving. All four descriptors are considered together for 3A. We will now pause two minutes for you to scan indicator 3A. Please make note of anything that is unclear or that you may have questions about. And once again, notice ways that you're already working towards this indicator in your classroom. Let's move on to Indicator 3B. As we began to introduce the rubric to teachers and administrators in the spring of 2020, we uncovered a common misunderstanding with the concepts presented in 3B, analyzing and constructing arguments with evidence. There are definitely lessons where we teach students the finer points of analysis and constructing arguments. Those lessons fit these descriptors very well. However, the indicator encompasses more than just those lessons. There is an expectation that students are analyzing everything that is being said and done in a classroom and are reacting appropriately to that. A couple of examples could be students in a high school classroom who are pointing out what they feel could be contradictions in the information being presented without being solicited to do so. In other grades, 
It is the natural reactions of students who are saying they agree or disagree with part of what another student has said and why. These types of student academic behaviors must be set as an expectation. Indicator 3B is also one of the locations that the committee chose to leave in redundancy. It is with the concept of synthesizing. In this indicator, you're considering how students are synthesizing the information in the classroom for the purpose of constructing a logical argument. Later, we'll discuss how synthesizing is used for another purpose. We will now pause two minutes for you to scan indicator 3B. Make note of any questions or anything that is unclear, and also notice the ways you're already working towards this indicator in your classroom. So far, we have considered the learning target, the task, the thinking in the task, and how students are naturally constructing responses throughout the learning process. Those concepts lead us next to consider how communication and collaboration will be used to support the expected learning for students. This is another great point to more clearly define preponderance of evidence. As an example, the teacher may have made a conscious decision to not have students collaborate during a given lesson because the teacher wants to use the lesson as an assessment lesson. The teacher wants to collect individual students' learning and understanding of the concepts without that understanding being influ influenced by other students. In that observation, the evaluator could then just not consider collaboration. However, over the course of multiple observations, a pattern would arise which would be used to establish a preponderance of evidence matched to the descriptor language. We will now pause for two minutes for you to scan indicator 3C. Please note any questions, anything that is unclear, and the ways that you're already working towards this indicator in your classroom.
Something unique happens in Indicator 3D. For the first descriptor, there is only language for what the expectation is and not for varying levels. Teachers are expected to set up and enforce the legal and ethical guidelines established for Greenwich Public Schools. The descriptor recognizes that students have free will and could choose not to follow those. The key is the teacher action. This indicator is also where the most obvious redundancy occurs with the concept of synthesis. In this context, students are expected to synthesize information for the purpose of using information for a given purpose. There are connections back to both 3A and to 3B. We will now pause for two minutes for you to scan indicator 3D. As before, make note of any questions, anything that is unclear to you, and the ways that you're already working towards this indicator in your classroom. This takes us to Domain 4, Professional Responsibilities and Reflection. This domain is typically not observed in the classroom, but there are elements that could be considered. The focus is primarily on the ongoing teacher learning and development, leading to improvements for students. The information and process will be similar to the current process in that these elements would be discussed at the beginning of the year, mid-year, and end of year, as well as when needed. We will now pause for two minutes for you to scan Domain 4. Make note of any questions that you have, anything that is unclear, and also ways that you're already working towards this domain.
During the month of May 2020, evaluators in the Greenwich Public Schools system participate in a series of calibration activities designed to introduce them to the rubrics to assure a minimum level of consistency in their understanding and to provide them with ideas for supporting teachers through video and video conferencing. In June of 2020, all evaluators will be required to successfully complete a certification process to assure individual competency with the instrument. And then there are plans for ongoing integrator reliability sessions for the evaluators. At the beginning of the 2020-2021 school year, we will roll out the changes to process. Those are still being finalized. The goal for the process is to shift the emphasis to professional conversations about practice. The committee is working to streamline the writing requirements, eliminate redundancy, and promote reflection and continual growth. The Temple Committee appreciates all the feedback you have given over the years, as we will all work together to improve the learning for our students and our teachers. The TEPL Committee understands that with anything new, there will be questions. We encourage you to submit your questions at the following link. Your answers will be provided at the answer link, as well as the answers to other questions asked by others in the district. This information will be available at the end of the presentation and also provided afterwards. Finally, we will have live question and answer sessions for each level. Information for the times and dates for those will be provided soon.